I'm Vera Stewart, and thank you so much for inviting me into your home tonight. You know, I was looking in the yard this week, and I thought, is that a daffodil getting ready to come up? And I thought, gosh, I'm ready for pies. I think about that this time of the year. So I thought tonight it would be a lot of fun to do three different pies. It's not all sweet tonight, so don't worry. We're going to do a wonderful lemon buttermilk pie. I'm going to do a delicious chicken pot pie. And then finally, remember that tomato pie that you used to get at Berry Vera? Well, I'm going to share that recipe with you tonight. So three wonderful pies that you can use any time of the day or night. So let's get started with the lemon buttermilk pie. This is the easiest pie crust that you will ever make. And I did this right before we came on the air. You take all of the dry ingredients, the um, flour, the salt, and the sugar, and you put it in your food processor. Pulse it long enough to just get, get it incorporated. Then I added a half a stick of butter that was cubed and three tablespoons of Crisco. And you wanna make sure that those are nice and good and cold. Then I pulsed it in the food processor for about, you know, six to eight times, just until it looked like coarse meal. Then finally I added four tablespoons of cold water, pulsed that, and as you can see, all of a sudden it just turned into a ball, and that's what you're looking for. So no kneading, no worrying about whether you've incorporated the ingredients, the food processor does that for you. Now I've pulled it out onto a piece of wax paper shaped it into a round disc, folded it up, and put it back in the refrigerator to chill for about 30 minutes. Took it out, got my floured surface ready on my cutting board. I rolled it out with the rolling pin, and I actually love to dust the rolling pin with flour a little bit before I get started. And what you're trying to accomplish is a nice circle to work with. I took my pie plate, put it on top of it, just so I could make sure I had my circle of the right size. Then I folded it into fourths, making it really easy to transfer from the board to the pie plate. And then you just open it out. I use the technique today of a flute that you do, and so I did a fluted border on the outside. And now I'm ready to do the contents. I pricked it with a fork, baked it for a few minutes in the oven at 400 degrees, put a parchment circle with dried beans for 10 minutes, and then I took that away before I put it back in the oven for the second time. So now let's do the inside of the pie, and it calls for granulated sugar, flour, and four eggs. Three eggs, actually, three large eggs. And I'm just gonna mix this with my wire whisk. This is the, the fun part because you don't even have to pull your mixer out for this. All right, now I'm gonna add a cup of buttermilk. And this is when people may say, oh, you know, I'm not sure about buttermilk. I don't know that I wanna eat that pie. My mom actually used to drink buttermilk. I, I could not understand it. But what you're gonna taste when you bake this pie is the lemon. Okay, so let's get that incorporated really well. Now, a half a stick of melted butter. Love all these ingredients tonight. And then a tablespoon, a hefty tablespoon of lemon zest. And then three tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon. So that one tablespoon actually accounted for almost the entire lemon and these three tablespoons is basically the juice that came out of that one lemon. So just so you'll know how much to purchase. And then I've got a teaspoon of vanilla. All right, so that's all there is to it, to the contents. We're gonna take this pre-baked pie shell. I'm gonna fill it with the filling. It's gonna go in a 350 degree oven for 50 to 60 minutes, you wanna make sure that it's not real shaky in the center. And then you want to certainly chill it before you serve it. So I'm gonna get this in the oven, and when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on that delicious chicken pot pie, just like your mama made it.
Hey, welcome back. And if you're just joining us, you've missed the buttermilk lemon pie getting prepared and in the oven. But don't worry, you're going to get to sample it at the end. And now we are getting started on the delicious chicken pot pie. And this is one of those comfort foods that probably takes everybody back to their childhood. I know it does for me. And if my two sons are watching right now, I used to on nights when I had worked all day long and you know I was kind of trying to come up with something really quick. There was never anything better than that quick chicken pot pie you could pull out of the freezer. But I, I have to say I didn't always make it myself. And I had a little song that I did called Chicken pot pie and I don't care, chicken pot pie and I don't care. And they would get so excited because they thought their mom was crazy and she was getting ready to put this delicious meal on the table. But now she has graduated to a delicious version of that wonderful Southern food. This is a meal in itself. You can do this in a salad and you're completely done. So what I did before we came on the air is I got the butter um, melted in the pan. I'm using a stock pot because I'm going to add all these other ingredients to it. And have just cooked down the onions, about a half a cup, just until they're translucent. And now I'm going to add a third a cu cup of just regular plain flour to that. And this is the basis for the good creamy um, center for that delicious pie. And you know when you're making this sort of thing, um, you know, I'm using just the regular frozen vegetables um, at the grocery store right now. But if you'll hang on to some of those good summer vegetables and get them in the freezer, you can really make a delicious chicken pot pie with some of those ingredients that you've saved over from the summer, like taking the corn off the cob or freezing some butter peas or um, butter beans would be really good in this. Carrots are always good. You might want to add extra of your favorite vegetable. Okay, so now to this, I'm going to add a cup and a half of chicken stock. And I love to use Fresh Market's brand on this. Always is good. And as I always say, be sure to mark the box when you open it so that you can remember the expiration date when you get ready to use it again. As this is cooking and getting thick, let me talk to you a minute about how I'm making this very easy to make because I just bought a rotisserie chicken um, at Fresh Market and I brought it home. All you do is literally just pull it apart with your hands. So quick and easy to do. And then once you've got it pulled apart, you can take the bones out, remove the skin, and literally in less than five minutes, I'm able to take my knife and cut it up into nice bite-sized pieces and just perfect. One chicken is just enough to make this recipe. It calls for about four cups of cut up chicken. So one rotisserie chicken is just perfect to do this. All right, so now you can see that this is starting to get nice and thick. And now I'm gonna add in two thirds of a cup of whole milk. And this is that wonderful, you know, when I was growing up, my favorite part of the chicken pot pie was this, the actual sauce and the crust. Maybe the vegetables, I kind of got a little picky with the peas. But this is one of those meals that this pie freezes really, really well. And if you're a newlywed out there or, you know, just looking for something that your children, your young children can will eat, this is so good. And as long as you're doing it, you ought to do two at one time. This pot would hold enough to do two. All right, so this is getting nice and thick. Cooks down just enough. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the pie crust I love to use. I love to use Pillsbury's pie crust. There's just something about that brand that really is works really well for this. Okay, so now I'm gonna take it off the heat. I'm gonna add in my chicken. And my mixed vegetables. Get that nice and stirred up. And let's put a little bit of salt and pepper, probably about a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. And then 
I'll show you about pie shell. So this is a double crust pie. So you're gonna do it according to the package directions, which means you've got to bake it for a few minutes. Well, you don't have to bake it before you put it in the oven. This is another reason why this is so quick and easy to do, but you can literally just roll this out directly into the pan. And this center part will be just enough to fill it up. So I'm gonna get this process going, and when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on that delicious tomato pie that you can use for an entree or a side dish. So come back with me in just a few minutes and I'll show you how to get that started and finish this wonderful chicken pot pie. There are a lot of plates on this table tonight, but what we're gonna do is go over the use of each of those plates and where they're placed on the table when you're setting the table. The first one I have is a coffee saucer. The coffee goes to the right of the spoons with your coffee cup on top, the handle going out. The next one is the bread and butter plate. It goes to the left on the side with the forks and then your butter knife goes on the top right corner. The next plate is the soup saucer. It will be served in the middle of the plate, but for the purpose of showing you, I'll put it here in front. The next one is the salad plate or dessert plate. It would go in the middle, but just for the purpose of showing, we'll set that to the left. And then finally, here's your dinner plate. So as you can see, a lot of plates, each one has a purpose and each one has a place. Welcome back, and we are well on our way to a pie night, and we've had a really great time. We started with a sweet pie, our buttermilk lemon pie. We went on to the chicken pot pie, and now I'm ready to do the side pie, which is a tomato pie that can actually be used as an entree as well. So while we were away during the break, I finished the chicken pot pie. I took the pre-made Pillsbury pie crust for, to use both pie crust and I put the first one in just as it is and made sure I had the sides nice and smooth. Then I poured the wonderful chicken filling into the pie shell. And then I took the next pie shell and folded it into fourths and then took a knife and made my slits on either side. Then I unfolded it by starting on the fourth side of the pie and just opening up each layer. As you can see now, I've got vents that'll be perfect to let this um, pie breathe while it's baking. Then I took a fork and crimped the sides and that was ready to go in the oven. It's baking now, it smells absolutely fantastic. So the tomato pie is going to use the pie shell that's in the aluminum pan that you pick up to in a package at the grocery store. So again, when you're making these sorts of recipes, go ahead and make two. This freezes beautifully so you can make it and have it ready to go. All right, so this, um, the pre-preparation here are the Roma tomatoes. You wanna slice those a little bit thicker than normal. Um, and I used about seven of the tomatoes. You wanna lay them out on paper towel to start to absorb some of that moisture out of them. And then take nice kosher salt and freshly ground pepper and get those ready and place to the side. Now the filling for the pie is a, ha is a cup of Hellman's mayonnaise and then a half a cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese, which they've already done for you at the Fresh Market, a cup of freshly grated cheddar cheese, and we're just gonna mix all of that together. Now it's time to start assembling this and it's a two layer pie. 
All right, so I'm just gonna take the tomatoes and I'm just gonna start going around the inside of the pie shell. And this is gonna be a very full pie, so don't be shy about using those tomatoes, filling every little gap. That's why you've got all different kinds of sizes. All right, so now I'm gonna take half of this mixture and I'm gonna spread it about on top of the tomatoes. And this is truly a wonderful brunch dish as well as a side dish if you're cooking a steak or if you just wanna have a vegetarian night, this is great. Now this is freshly chopped basil and spring onions. It's about a third of a cup of the fresh basil and a half a cup or a half a bunch of the spring onions. And needless to say, that combination is fabulous. Now we're gonna do a second layer of the tomatoes. And again, we wanna fill this up. We want it to be chocked full. And the nice thing about this dish is it does use Roma tomatoes. So in terms of what time of year can you make this pie, you can make this pie whenever you want to. This is a wonderful thing to take to somebody, you know, if you just need to do something quick to a friend, this in a salad. So this is gonna use about all of the tomatoes that I cut. And they are in varying sizes, so six or seven is just about right. All right, and then finally, we're gonna take oh, the rest of the basil and the onions. And then the top layer of the mayonnaise just dollops on the top because you definitely want all of the tomatoes to show through. So I'm just gonna take it and little by little just dollop it on the top. And then this doesn't bake very long, about 25 or 30 minutes, just until this topping is nice and golden brown. So come back with us after the break and you're gonna see all three pies and we'll talk a little bit more about the recipes and maybe taste one. So come back with me in just a few minutes. Welcome back, and the pie segment tonight I think has gone really well, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And you know, it's always fun at the end to show you my recommendations for plating it or showcasing it on a buffet. So let's start with the last thing that we made first in the end, and that was the tomato pie. So as you can see, the whole pie is really beautiful in terms of making a presentation on a buffet or delivering it to a special friend. When you go to cut it, it doesn't always end up in exactly a pie shape, but all of the different combinations of the pie crust and the cheese and the tomato, fresh basil and the spring onions is a beautiful um, presentation on this plate with a fried pork chop and just some wonderful beans that you've just sauteed in the skillet. That makes a complete meal, it's just beautiful. I'm sure that'll be something that you wanna try really soon. Then the chicken pot pie, as you can see, also baked up really beautifully. The fluting on the top just kind of puffed up. It looks so good. And then in terms of plating that, it's more likely to maintain its, its shape because you're, you're going to give a much larger portion of this because it's an entree portion. Let some of the meat and the vegetables just kind of ooze out of the side. And again, accompany that with just some sauteed fresh vegetables, whatever happens to be in the freezer or the refrigerator, a little bit of broccoli, some snow peas, fresh squash. That turns out really beautiful. You don't even need a biscuit with this. You don't even need a salad. You're ready to go. And, and you know, unless you've got a really big family or a really hungry husband, then this is gonna be enough for maybe a couple of meals. So that's a really great dish. And then finally, the buttermilk lemon pie. 
beautiful but really pretty on the plate with just some fresh fruit, strawberries, blueberries, you know, a little dollop of whipped cream on the top. And depending on what sort of meal you've made that night, you might want to cut the pieces really thin or, you know, a little bit larger if, if you've had a light meal. So as you can see, pie comes in anything from sweet to salty to savory. It's wonderful this time of year to, do, to make pies. I want you to please go to the website, uh, nbc26.tv, and make sure that you look for these recipes online. And any recipe that I've made throughout the season is there. You just have to scroll down and look for the picture and you'll find it. I also want to point out that many of you know that I have a special needs granddaughter, Jane. And Jane made Miss February for the calendar for therapeutic options. And I want you to go to their website. I'd love for you to see the little picture of Jane. And um, if you'd like to make a contribution or buy one of the calendars, the website is on the screen. But I'm so proud of my little Jane being elected as Miss February for the calendar. So that's really special. Again, I want to remind you that no matter what you do, do it in good taste. And I'm gonna end tonight with tasting this lemon buttermilk pie. And I hope you'll come back and join me again next Saturday for another episode of The Very Vera Show.